All right, in this first video on GIMP, I'm just going to show you a few of the basic um, tools you'll need to be using, um, the, more, the more common tools, and a couple of little shortcuts and little tricks to make it a little bit easier for you to use. Um, the, fir the first thing that causes people a little bit of trouble with GIMP is the fact that there are these floating windows on the screen. Um, uh, especially when your when your your when your image is not uh, full screen, you can see that you have your picture you're working on, but you have these toolboxes that are floating even outside of that window, and and normally you're used to having all of the programs or all the little windows a part of a program, all within one main out outer program or outer window, and in this case that's not how it works. So just know that these toolbars can. Um, can move around. Uh, many times you may have three or four of these floating around your screen. Uh, you can turn them off and you'll want to use these windows to turn them back on. Windows, dockable dialogues. Uh, we'll be using, um, for example, brushes. We'll be using um, gradients and layers and um, colors and, and uh, there several different that we'll be using. Uh, the, by far the most important one is this tool options. This tool options, no matter what you select, and I'm going to come back to this toolbox in a moment, the tool options will change giving you options for that tool. Uh, now by default, yours will be located down here below your toolbox, but you can drag these out. Now with my screen recording program, it's not letting me uh, move these out, but you can actually grab this window and drop it on another. That's why they call it dockable dialogues, because you can dock these little windows in other windows, and, I'll, and you can practice that in class. Mine does not uh, work while I'm recording. Um, the, the toolbox itself is probably the, the, the key to almost all the uh, tools. Uh, we'll be using text with the A, we'll be using a paintbrush with the um, with a paintbrush tool, we can erase. Uh, whenever you see this checkered board pattern, that means there's nothing there, it's invisible, or it's completely transparent. Uh, we'll be using it to erase things. Uh, we'll be using the stamp tool. Um, the stamp tool allows you to clone, you know, part of your picture to another part of your image. So that's the clone tool. We'll be, we'll be using that to correct some features. Uh, notice too. Let me go back to the brush real quick here. When you're painting, uh, the size of the brush is shown there. Um, over here in the tool options, you can select a couple different things. You can select different types of brushes. Uh, for example. Um, you may want one that has more of a jagged edge to it, so when you're painting, kind of has more of a uh, maybe a paintbrush or not not a, not a solid edge to it. Um, or sometimes you do want a solid edge, and that would look like this. Uh, probably the most common one we're using is this feathered brush. To feather is to fade out the edges on something. So when you're painting, it doesn't have a sharp edge like the other one did, the the solid one here. It has a faded edge, and that's called a feathered brush. Another thing you want to do is learn how to change the size of the brush. Uh, you can change it either here with this little option here that size, or if you can go in, you can go in very small increments using the square brackets on your keyboard. I don't know if you can see that it's getting smaller there as I'm holding down the uh, left bracket. Now you can paint with a smaller brush. Also, you may be wondering why are we painting at all, because you may not be wanting to use this to paint images or make paintings, uh, but to fix or correct photographs. And we're actually going to be using these same options, uh, brush size and feathers uh, and things to actually correct photos. Not just paint solid ink on them, but to actually um, you know, change the eye color. We, want, we, we have to, may have to select um, you know, the, the part of the eye to change colors. When you're removing backgrounds, you're going to be painting to select the, the outer part of the picture. So there's going to be times where you are going to be using the paintbrush features without actually painting solid you know, colors. So um, a couple other things very quickly. You can smudge with a smudge with a smudge tool. You can um, don't use that feature a lot, but it's there. I mentioned the cloning already. You can blur uh, using this. You can, and that's very subtle, but it's actually blurring the beak there. Um, Dodge and burn, it's probably a new term for most people, but to dodge and burn is to brighten and darken just in a certain area. So right here when I have dodge selected, uh, again I'm using my tool options to get to that um, dodge area, it's brightening where I'm painting. That only gets br It doesn't get brighter and brighter as I hold the mouse down, but if I let go and now paint more, it'll get even brighter. So every time you hold the mouse down or let go, it'll kind of go up in a level of brightness. Uh, the opposite of that would be to burn. 
if something is too dark in your photo you can paint and it will get darker and I'm doing the same thing as I paint over it it's going to get darker and darker and darker so that's the uh, dodge and burn tool located right here in the tool tool um, toolbox um, if these windows get in your way if you're painting and they're in your way you can hit the tab key again it does not work on my machine with the uh, recording software but the hide docs will actually just make them disappear and if you turn them back on they come back exactly where they were another very helpful thing is to zoom in and out on, a, on an image you can control and use your wheel and your mouse to zoom in and while you're zoomed in if you need to pan around your photo instead of coming down down here to the um, um, scroll bars down here hold on the space bar and just move your mouse you don't have to click or anything just move your mouse and it will pan around your photo um, another thing I just meant, I meant to mention earlier when painting a um, very very helpful feature is to paint in a straight line if I click somewhere and hold down the shift key it will paint in a straight line or select in a straight line depending on what we're trying to accomplish so just be aware of that uh, the ability to pan around and the ability to paint in a uh, straight line now another thing that's going to be causing some people confusion is whenever you have and I'm going to go ahead and delete um, or fill with white um, the the background that's around your canvas um, see if I start if I paint it stops right there but sometimes on your monitors this gray is so bright that it's hard to see the difference between this white and the background so if you go to edit preferences under appearance you can change that color I typically go with you know a bright red or a bright green something that's very obvious now it's very easy to tell where your 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 image or your canvas stops and starts um, I mentioned the toolbox. We're going to use a lot, the toolbox a, a lot, but there's also another area up here with a full menu up here. And a lot of the commands we're going to be using, for example, filtering and blurring the entire image or using effects, uh, changing the color of the entire image, are actually located up here in the menu bar. So be aware that I may say go to image uh, crop to selection, and that is up here in the image, not on the, the toolbar. Uh, you can also right click anywhere and get to those same features. Um, I typically go to the top, but you can right click and get to the exact same options. Um, I know there's a lot of, of options very quickly, but the, the key the key thing from this video is to understand that these windows will kind of float around your uh, your window even if it's not maximized. Uh, I typically maximize so it's not so busy. Uh, but these you'll have multiple windows floating around. You can dock them. I cannot dock them in mine when the screen recording is going on, but you can combine these. Um, and, and drag another window right here it'll, it'll combine to three or four different tools in the same box. Uh, tool options, uh, changing the options for all the tools that you select right here, uh, knowing how to change, knowing how to paint, changing the size and the type of brush. Um, oh, color, I forgot to mention color. Uh, right here, this is the foreground, the background color. Typically you're going to worry about the foreground color. If you just click that one time, you get a um, a little change foreground color option and you can paint with a different color there's actually a, a window it may not come up with my recording going on but um, okay good um, and that just stays open you can just leave on the side screen so I want to paint green now I want to paint this color so you can just leave that on the side over here docked um, and just you know get to that very quickly so that's the foreground color um, actually two other options I want to mention very quickly is the uh, uh, the bucket fill this will look for consecutive colors you know so if you look for all the black that's actually attached to each other and just fill that if you use paint that that program that feature has been in paint as well and then the gradients allows you to go from one color to another that's what a gradient means it's a fade from one color to another so if I drag a line it will create a blend in that direction and we're gonna go over some more details on different shapes there are round shapes, so it'll actually fade in a circle. Um, it'll fade, um, and you can you can create your own gradients or use the gradients that come with with the program. And um, so, just some basic features here, and you can kind of explore. A lot of these are self-explanatory. We'll learn. We'll go over more detail on the more advanced ones and how you can use them. But in this first video, I just want to go over some basic options of the the menus and the the windows and the features that we'll be using in GIMP.